what is good, good people. So, I just watched this video and I thought I would riff on it and add some things, add some, uh, some levels, some depths and dimensions into, uh, what we, what we watch here. Which is, uh, another video from Skylife, and, uh, such, such a beautiful person. Um, I've been, I've been really feeling and integrating a lot of, uh, empowered female energy lately. And, uh, balancing that within myself, uh, realizing how to balance it, the, uh, the most beneficial way to, to balance the, uh, opposing energies, and it's not, it's not opposing as much as, uh, it's polarities is what I'm speaking of. Uh, unifying the masculine and feminine the push and pull integrating and realizing what needs to be engaged, what what directions and pathways needs to need to be engaged for the individual to find clarity, to experience gnosis, to experience truth for yourself. And so one of the many modalities and methods of doing this is exposing yourself to extreme cold to tap back into the quintessential essence and broad nature of what you are, of bearing witness to what happens to your mind whenever you engage things like this, whenever you, uh, Test the boundaries of what you thought your limits were, and then you surpass them, and then you find new boundaries, and then you surpass those, and then you begin to realize what you're really doing in the first place. So first here, uh, they're going to get into breath work, and then they're going to get into the cold. And I do have a card drawn that, that I drew from the Sacred World Oracle. And this is a card that I have not drawn before. This is a card that I have not seen before. So whenever I drew it and I saw it, and I saw the imagery, I was like, ooh. I mean, as as always, you know, how very synchronistic, but also just just on many levels with the synchronicity. This this, this was a very very uh, multi layered synchronicity because the the image was uh, almost picture perfect of uh, a certain a certain. Uh, someone but then also uh the the animal <laughs> involved the uh, uh the species it's it's uh something that's been with me for a very very long time tapping into this like where i have seen rivers of, of this insect uh, flow 
and, and fly uh, before me. And yeah, and I also just want to give a shout out to uh, Zigzag. I just watched uh, one of your videos and uh, the, <laughs> the one about your Christmas tree, but I mean, that's that's what you titled it, but that's not obviously what it was about. Like, uh, there was so much in that fucking video, dude, and I, I just felt so much fucking appreciation for you. Uh, having the opportunity to to just just to listen to you and 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 vibe with you and because you choose to put yourself you know on camera and just just to see you and feel you like uh yeah and just the synchronicities that you know we're always <laughs> going going in in and out of and it seems like more more inwards than outwards right because isn't that how it works we, we uh a lot of us seem to be re just reflecting uh mirroring each other uh the messages and, and the things even if they're not expressed like the things that we feel like we we uh watch one of our one of each other's videos and oh hey well, wouldn't you know it you're talking about the the exact same exact thing that i'm experiencing so uh this uh, synchron city the, the synchronicity <laughs> it's, it's very beautiful to experience and connect with and be reminded of the interconnectedness because uh, the world that we're living in right now and I'm going to get into this in later videos with the occulted world I'm going to get deeper into it but uh, it's designed to disconnect you so like it's designed to make you feel lonely even even amongst family and friends like uh, it's, it's going to be for the for the most part, for the majority, superficial bullshit. So uh, this this interconnectedness that that is felt and engaged is. is I, I just want you to know, whoever's listening to this, that. Your engagement and your felt experience is, is felt on so many levels and it has a huge impact on the collective and you are never alone so what you are going through and even if it's a, a if you're in a super high place or if you're in a super low place like know that Many people are feeling what you're feeling, and many people know what you're going through. Even if you you aren't in a place where you can connect with people, that can share that. Try to find the stillness in, so that you can feel that within you. Because within this uh, center point and this stillness, you will realize what you truly are. Within the silence, within the stillness, you can find the spark. the essence of what you truly are truth about your origins about your true past 
the occulted history that has been Hidden from you, uh, but hidden in plain sight as well. It's only hidden. <laughs> whenever you go along with the scripts and the bullshit. Because it's all inside of you. Like that's, There can be no other way. It's, it's all. You are a piece of the everything. And the everything is a piece of you. It's all inside of you. All you need to do is tap back into that silence and stillness and feel. And yes, there's going to be places where you can more easily tap back into this feeling. Such as going out in nature. Meditating out in nature. Feeling the interconnectedness, quieting your mind, meditating. And then also doing things like this, going into the cold, uh, testing yourself, finding your barriers, testing your barriers uh, of what you can take, of, of what you can handle. And then also the breath work. So yeah, I've talked, I've talked long enough here. <laughs> I'm sorry, sometimes, sometimes I get going. So, uh, let's see if we can find what we need to find to begin again. So currently it is 34 degrees Fahrenheit outside and it is 50 degrees in the water. I looked it up. It's not as cold as some of the other ice baths I've done, but with the ocean, it's moving so much that it makes it really challenging. That's I just gotta say, man, like this, this is one of the most awesome females I have ever, uh, connected with on, on a certain level. This is her brother, and, uh, she said he was 19, um, And that's just wow. I'm I'm seeing a lot of age things lately. That's like, what the fuck? Like people being like, oh, I'm 39. I know you. I know. I know. You know who I'm talking about there. 39. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? No, you're not. I mean, ah, uh, Jesus, dude. Wow. And then like. People that, that say they're super young and then like are musicians and have like old, old souls and uh, bring forth from like the well of knowledge, uh, the well of gnosis, uh, like deep level vibrations and, and, and feelings. And then also just like the look of them, like they don't look their age either uh, for, for both ends of, of the polarities there. And age, age is a fucking mentality. It doesn't. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just a number. What What matters is the experience. What What people have felt and integrated. That That is the age. The experience is the age. So I mean, someone can be, what whatever the fuck age, and it doesn't matter. Because so even if they're crazy fucking young if they have felt certain things and integrated those feelings then uh they're, they're going to be uh leaps and bounds past and beyond people uh twice or three times their age or, or more and the same with the other polarity you know um Whenever, whenever we learn deep level cleansing and healing, um, people on uh, that, that, that are higher up in in the uh, solar cycles, uh, 
they're going to have a, a, a youthful uh, aura about them, both in their energy and their vibration. Because they they can tap into this uh, childlike mind state and engage it. The thing about the yeah. So we're gonna. Okay. Yeah. And then she she talked about. Uh, I just keep going on, but uh, we're gonna get into this now. She she talked about the. Uh, Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been doing with the cold. And uh, she talked about the the water that is moving. And if you ask me that the best form of uh, cold therapy is utilizing the water. And yes, you can go into uh, like the uh, hyperbaric chambers or whatever the fuck they do where uh, the air is uh, super chilled. Um, I don't recommend that. Like, I recommend all experience. I recommend experimenting, ex experience, and choosing what, what works for you. That's, that's what I recommend, first and foremost. But, um, with, with my experimenting, what I have found is, uh, Utilizing a flow, and so water, like the cold with the water, what, and we've talked about, you know, the memory in the water. But, uh, utilizing the cold in the water does something else to your body. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, another level that you will uh, um, tap into. And so... What I have been doing lately is putting my shower head on like a, the pressurized mode. And so I'm having like cold, uh, freezing cold because uh, right now we're in uh, pretty cold temperatures. But uh, the water is really fucking cold. Like, like the kind of cold I've been waiting for, cold, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, having, having this pressurized blasted water is, is blasting the temperature deeper inside. And so like, I'm going deeper and deeper inside and, um, what I've been experiencing, like once again, shout out to, uh, all you real motherfuckers, but also shout out to Skyhopper for talking about the marrow because this is what I've been, uh, I've been experiencing having the cold pushed in so far that I, it gets to my bones and that's a whole nother fucking level experience of cold. Once you get the cold in your bones, uh, you're, you're really tested with your mentality. It's, it's really make or break at that point. So, uh, yeah, I've been utilizing um, I've been I've been doing it on different extremities, so uh, like I'll uh, blast it on my arms or my legs, and just I'll, I'll I'll go through the layers. And this is the thing: like if you want if you want to utilize cold for recovery, uh, you got to go through the layers of of what you feel with the cold. So it's going to be um, painful at first, like quite painful. Potentially too painful, considering, um, depending upon the level of inflammation that you have in your body, it could be extremely painful that you can't uh, pass a layer one, and that's that's most most everyone. So you have to pass that point. You have to pass the point of hypothermia, to where your body. You control your breath to the point where your body doesn't have that reaction of uh, needing to uh, freak out. And your mind doesn't freak out. So you, you control your mind and your breath. And uh, you, you just, you know, you know, <laughs> what's to come and what's coming. And you know where, where to place your focus. It's all focus, baby.
And then after the pain level comes the the numbing. Actually, it, it's pain and then um, your body, your skin kind of doesn't, and it's the same with heat. I, I go, what, what I do in the shower is I go extreme heat and then extreme cold. So uh, the heat, I get to the point where the skin, it, it kind of feels like it's uh, freezing, actually. And then, and then the cold actually starts to feel like it's burning. So you get past those levels, and then you get into the numbness, uh, and 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 then into the achiness. You you start to feel the achiness. And then and then you just don't really feel anything. It gets it gets, and that's whenever you get into the bone. And then at that point, uh, you you tap into a, a new level of pain. It's like, it's like you begin the process again. And then your mind starts to go into places like, is this really beneficial for me? Like, what am I doing? And then you can even push past that point. Or you can end it there and you can integrate that level that, that you've uh, experienced. So uh, earlier tonight, what I experienced was uh, I got my forearm and uh, uh, elbow, that, that joint area within the elbow, and, and the forearm and connecting with the, uh, the bicep and the upper arm. I got that uh, so cold that um, Flexing my hand and my fingers like uh, into a fist. It, it was very interesting <laughs> doing this and attempting to do it quickly because it was like, uh, nope. The uh, the the interconnectedness ha had been. sent to another place. The the warmth had been sent to the uh, organs, the, to the internals. So by by flexing my, my hands and my fingers and my wrists, I, I was sending energy back into uh, into these areas. And so it begins with the layers and the ligaments and the tendons and then eventually the muscle and the fascia, the levels and the layers of the skin. And whenever you do this, like your your body uh, heals and repairs on, on on some very deep levels. Start with breath work to prime the body. We're going to do Wim Hof method breath work and then we're going to get in the water. Yes, so so you can you can prime the body and get ready for it or you can just go right into it and then utilize the breath work within the cold. So so it's up to you uh, what, what you want to do there. Experiment See what works for you. Always, in, in all ways, in all things. See what works for you. Because that may not necessarily work for other people, or other people are guided towards other things. And that's fine. That's, that's what's going to uh, speak to them and reach to them. And what they're going to be able to engage more, more easily in, in, in the flow. So... See what works for you. This is uh, ex experiment, experimenting life, uh, experiencing the experiment. 
This breathwork uh, stuff can, can take you into places that you have never been before. So, especially if you haven't ever done it before. Especially if you have been a shallow breather your whole whole life. Especially if you you feel like you have a lack of energy. If you feel like you don't have ever have that much energy. If you feel like you have you are having your energy seeped or siphoned. Like you are uh, bogged down or drained. Doing this deep level breath work will be very, very fucking intense for you at first. But you gotta keep going with it. To find true healing and integration. So, uh, so yeah, this, this is just an example here of what can happen. And uh, Sky, uh, the the experienced person. So this is basically the shaman, and then her brother is, is kind of like the uh, the practitioner. And uh, as and this is a beautiful representation of what happens during a deep level uh, shamanics and plant spirit medicines. Like um, a person can potentially freak out. And then the shaman comes in and reminds them of what's going on, that they are safe, they are okay, and to go. And she keeps reminding him repeatedly, like, go, go into it, go f flow with it. And that's, that's directly, like, Wim Hof, right there. You go into it. So this was fucking beautiful to, to witness. <laughs> shit dude and I mean th this is and once again like this guy's 19 so like this is what happens whenever you are so used to being encapsulated with the mind and, and engaged with um, whenever I say ego I mean like a false sense of self the uh, persona that you have been led to believe is you but you have not uh yet engaged what you truly are which it is that is the ego is the persona but it's everything it's everyone's ego and persona it's all of it you are all of it that is you you are the spirit you are the soul and you can experience it and this is why we are out here talking about shamanics and plant spirit medicines and deep level healing and integrating and engaging and refining of what you really are. Reminding. 
of what you really are, which is everything. So yes, uh, this is what happens whenever uh, people get into deep level um, engagements and they do not go with the flow. They do not allow the experience to happen and they start to freak out. So like, um, it's called a quote unquote bad trip, you know, people, uh, they resist and that's, that's exactly what was happening there. He was resisting the things that were happening, even though his sister there in, in, the, uh, the person who was well fucking experienced with, with all of that, she knew exactly what was going on. She knew everything was okay. And she was reminding him, like, this is normal. This is okay. Go with it. Like, he still wasn't able to release. So, like, this is what happens. And this is the purpose of a shaman. Is to remind and, and help guide the person back into the flow. And usually this is done with Ikaru's uh, certain songs, resonance, vibrations. It doesn't even have to have any kind of a physicality with it. It can just be totally mental. Depends on the level of uh, the layers that are being engaged. The, the level of the mind that is being engaged. Not a joke. What happened? That was probably the most intense experience probably I've ever, I've ever had physically because my breath was steady, but my face was starting to like shake. Like it's it almost like that. Like my eyes and skin was like almost like not bubbling, but like kind of like shaking. Well, not starting. And this is called a cellular cascade. You you can look into pranayama, and this is well known within pranayama practice practices and practitioners. What happens, uh, the, the physical sensations that happen um, on the onsets of experiencing these things. Um, having so much life in Ka and spirit um, be engaged in having all, all, all of your cells uh, washed within this. You start to experience a vibration and it's a, it's it's almost like into a vibration that, that happens before you go out of body, but it, it's it's a little it's a little more on the physical end because the, the vibrations with going out of body, um, that's on a like on a core level. That's on a level where uh Hmm. How to describe that? Um, basically, it takes all of your uh, sensory uh, hearing, feeling, and uh, it just becomes a uh, intense vibration until you're able to pop out. But but with uh, the breath work, that's that's. A physical uh, vibration. Your whole body starts to vibrate. Your skin starts to vibrate. All your cells start to vibrate. So you have to uh, go through these layers. And at first, you know, that's that's just... You're not going to be used to experiencing something like this. So it's, it's going to be like, what the fuck? And you're going to want to back out of it. Because you don't know what the fuck's going on. But then, that's when you become curious about it. You you start to look into it to see that, you know, this is just the first layer. And then you can kind of build up an um, courage and an encouragement to go a layer deeper. To go into this. I'm starting to lose control of my body. I lost control of my hands. I was in this sort of a position. Yeah. That's normal. Oh, I was yes. having a lot of positive <laughs> and negative, but definitely addressing negative thoughts. You know what I mean? I don't know. There's a lot of like, I was just thinking forgiveness. It's so weird to say, like, why was that coming into my mind? It's almost like, not, not my life flash before my eyes, but like, things that's flash That's beautiful. Past, um, in, in my, in my, you know. That's beautiful. That's awesome that he's able to, like, uh, articulate so much of this and, and forgiveness is, is so huge. Like, 
that's that's uh, a huge part of what we deal with whenever we we go into these deeper layers and these deeper states um that's that's part of the first barrier is is, is the forgiveness and that's probably the biggest hurdle it is the first fucking hurdle so just because i say it's the first barrier and the first layer it doesn't mean like it doesn't mean that it, it's the simplest or, or anything like that like really it's the hardest and uh realizing the things that we've been holding on to the guilt or, or whatever it may be the guilt the shame the resentfulness for whatever realizing that and then and then seeing it for what it is and letting go of it that's the biggest hurdle We haven't even gone to the water yet. That's a whole different no. thing. We had to take a pause to regroup after the breath work because it was so intense. Everything yes. you experience is very normal when you do breath work to get technique, to have yourself have maximum tension in areas. And then usually what happens is shaking. you find a release from it. Breath work is also highly emotional. So, not to... so yeah, like what Wim Hof says, uh, what we are just saying is... Um, once you find your barrier in your lair, like, release, go into it. Because what happens is you break through to the other side. Like, you'll start to experience things that you maybe have not ever experienced before or that you don't remember experiencing before. But then whenever you keep going in and in, you, you find this release that happens. And then you're on a whole other layer and level. And that's, that's just how it works. <laughs> With the layers and levels and depths and dimensions. You go into it. As you're thinking about forgiveness and really looking at things in your life that to look at how do you feel now pretty alive it's almost like you just forget what it feels like to be in control i sat up and like we look out here and it's just beautiful you just start to realize like things are not as important as things you think are important aren't that important exactly. and the things we're neglecting to notice are the most important exactly okay should we get in the water let's go so beautiful And I don't remember what he said his uh his previous time was being in the cold, but she said hers was ten minutes and she wanted to push herself and go for eleven minutes. <laughs> He's tapping out. <laughs> and also, I like, guess another thing, like, um, he, and this is just another layer. Like, once you're once you're uh, used to knowing the layers for yourself, then then you know. But uh, being being within the cold. The skin gets uh, very, very pink. So uh, he he went through the first layer, which is what I talked about before, which is the pain layer. So it got too painful for him, and he 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 was done with it, and that's that's fine. Like uh, we do what we can do um, in the moment, and then we realize, you know, if we want to push further, then what we need to do to do that. Which is uh, just focus, coming back into the center point, the stillness. So you'll notice that uh, huh. Hold up. Hold up. 
Let me get this. <laughs> of course. Just one second. Very interesting. How very interesting. <laughs> The Zen Man. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the Zenny. So yeah. With with the uh, camera um, that I have it now, like it may seem like his skin is a little bit pinker, but uh, it's not. It's at the normal level. So uh, that was just the first layer, and then you'll see whenever Sky comes out, like her her skin is super pink. Uh, whenever I do my my super blasting of the fucking ice water. Uh, on my skin, it gets it gets very very fucking pink, and uh, you go through all the layers to where uh, it takes it takes your body um, a little bit of time to, to start to uh, have the cold because once you get the cold in your bones and the marrow, you start to tap into that. You, it takes a little bit of time for the warmth to come back into those places and then and then to be integrated back outward so it's like uh it goes back inside and then it slowly starts to spread back into the extremities and when when you go through that process you experience a uh a replenishment uh, so this is why elite level athletes do this with uh, recovery. And you you don't need to just do this if you're an elite level athlete. Like if you do this and you don't, you know, do extreme uh, sports or engagements or whatever phys physically, uh, you will still experience um, the benefits and. Um, a deep level engagement with with yourself, with uh, testing the boundaries of your your of your mind, of what you thought you could handle, and uh, oftentimes before we go into these extreme um, states of mind or these engagements, um, our mind or something inside of us will be like, uh, do I really want to do this? Uh, Maybe I shouldn't do this, and it's it's a lot like you know, um, having a cultivated practice of meditation or a cultivated practice of working out continuously. We'll have these uh, states where our our body or our mind something is like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't. Like maybe we can we can just take a day off or, you know. But but whenever you get into the engagement, into you know into the workout, you get a little ways into the workout. You get the uh, adrenals going. You get the endorphins going. Um, it's the same with the cold. Once once that cold hits my body, immediately, my body's like, ah, oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. All, all the doubt goes away, and we're just like, we're getting into this, and we know why we are doing this. And... Yeah, it's going to be painful, but that, that's that's part of the process. Going into the pain. And then and then going through out into the other side. And what you've experienced with that is, well, just experience it for yourself. A rejuvenation. A replenishment that happens on a cellular level 
your your nervous system repairs itself on a whole nother level. Like a boss. Like a boss. Like a boss. And once again, I don't know if you can tell with with this uh, filter, but yeah, I don't know. I can tell even just looking at the screen here. Uh, her skin is very pink, and this is what happens. Um, this is what happens. I will I will say with extreme heat and extreme cold. The body is very pink. It it is bizarre though with with the cold because <laughs> you start to lose uh, mobility with with the functionality of the body. <laughs> it's very rigid, and you're like, ah, oh, what the fuck's going on? But uh, afterwards, it, it's it's such a beautiful experience. Your senses are enlivened. So, uh, I mean, you can take it to, to next levels, too, like uh, deeper layers and levels, the more you go into it. So, like, what I do is I do extreme heat. I do gua sha. I do orin therapy on my skin. And then I do the extreme cold. And uh, that has been very miraculous for me on many levels. <sighs> okay, so uh, 11. So we will, we will show this card here now and end it with that. How fucking amazing is that? So we'll read what the good book has to say. <laughs> I'm about the dragonfly. Key words, unexpected guidance, surprising grace, transcendence. The dragonfly card serves as a symbol of unexpected grace found in difficult places. These flying insects often congregate in, <laughs> congregate in swampy marshes where they eat mosquitoes and other stinging insects. Simidae, a goddess associated with Dukana Indians of the Amazon, was transformed into a dragonfly so she might transcend her difficulties. In North America, the Zunis consider the dragonfly an intermediary between the spirit and the physical worlds. Today, though some fear the dragonfly for its sting, it is harmless. It is, uh, 
It is a sign symbol as is everything. It is a representation of your inner state. So whenever you have a dragonfly grace your being, recognize what is happening inside of you. And this goes with all animals, all levels of engagement. Recognize what is happening inside of you to where you are experiencing things outside as within, so without. <laughs> Transform your mentality to reshape and reform to transmit the transformation recognition and a recollection of what it really means to be real or to be awake and be aware to be alive engage these things for yourself and transform the mind and the linguistics, transform the words, lay down the sword, let go of the words to transform them into the direct experience, which is what you are. Engage self, engage yourself as the self, as the all that is, one as one.